Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now that we have the dash in, I can get back to the transmission. So today's project is going to be to get the clutch, the bell housing, the release bearing, the transmission itself, and the cross member in. So uh, quite a bit of work, so let's get started. So I was going to reuse the pilot bushing I already had until I found that there's a bit of slop in it. So you can see how much wiggle is there and I just don't like that. So we're going to put a new one in and I'm going to use the bread trick to see if I can pop it out. And the bread trick is just taking some moist bread and shoving it in there. It's working. There we go. We got it. That works really well. So the new pilot bushing is installed. Uh, just a quick tip, I did impregnate this with some oil and I put this in the freezer for about 12 hours or so and it certainly made a difference on getting it in uh, easily. I can now install my McLeod RXT dual disc clutch. Make sure your flywheel surface and pressure plate surfaces are clean. You don't want any dirt or grease on it. Like so. Then you can put your adapter plate on. Now I'm using ARP 1302201 pressure plate bolts. Um, they have this shoulder right here that acts like a dowel for all the, the holes. So with the second disc on, I can now put on the pressure plate portion of the clutch. Just line up the stripes, which are right, where are they, right there, with the uh, ones on the adapter plate and you'll are in the correct orientation. So with the bell housing on, I can now install my hydraulic release bearing. First thing I need to do is install the adapter plate, which just slides over like this. Now these bolts, they didn't come with any kit, and it was a little difficult to find out what they were, but they are a 10.9 M6 one-inch bolt. I'll throw a little Loctite on it and then torque it down. To measure for the installation height of the release bearing, we need to find the distance from the clutch fingers here that touch the bearing itself to the face of the transmission or bell housing here. So we need to get a straight edge, which we'll throw it across like so. We'll get our caliper and we just bring it down until we're touching the tip of that like so. I'll get it over there like that. And it looks like we're at 3.432. 
So we subtract our air gap, which is an eighth of an inch, 0.125, and we're looking at 3.307 for uh, an installation height. To install the release bearing to the install height, all we have to do is just spin it onto the collar until we get to the correct depth. I will use my straight edge, like so. And because what we measured 3.432 off the bell housing, uh, we want an eighth of an inch gap, that's 0.125, so we're looking at 3.307 from the face of the bearing to the face of the transmission. So, we got a ways to go. Once you have the release bearing threaded onto the correct install height, you just want to orientate the line so they feed through your slots in the transmission and bell housing. Um, I'll do a final check with my measurements. And it looks like we are virtually dead on. So the orientation gets held. So there's a little bowl, a little screw holes in the adapter plate and it just gets held together with uh, this little bolt. There's two different sizes. I'm going to use the smaller one. It doesn't really matter for me as long as it does not interfere with your clutch or anything else. And so I put a little Loctite on it and we'll just thread that in and call it a day. There we go, and that's installed. So I have the transmission back in. I will say it was a heck of a fight to get it installed. I actually had to pull the bell housing and clutch and do the alignment again. I don't recommend this tool right here as it's just too sloppy. The tolerances are shitty. So I ended up finding a, an old input shaft and much, much better. My, uh, my pilot bushing was actually quite tight even. Uh, so I've... I didn't show you installing it because you don't need to hear all the swear words that I had to go through to get it in. Uh, but now we can install the American Powertrain cross member. And to do that, we need to install these, like these wings that go into, you know, they bolt to the original location, but these slots right here make it modular. So you can mount, you know, your T56 or your TKO, whatever. So let's put those on and then we can get this mounted up. And finally, I have my cross member installed. Um, you can see how it attaches to these little side wings here. Very adjustable, great piece by American Powertrain, uh, mainly for the amount of adjustments it can do. At first, I thought it wasn't fitting until I found that this can adjust. So you just gotta loosen these and then this will slide side to side. Get your transmission mount in. I'm using the stock rubber amount uh gives a little more flex so i don't break anything hopefully uh, i will probably end up pulling this back out so i can reroute my uh, cable underneath it or i guess above it uh, but yeah i'm glad this is all in it's under its own weight now i can now go finish the uh, where are we looking at i can finish the hydraulic hoses for my uh clutch and uh, measure for my drive shaft and things like that so uh, until next time, I guess uh, like if you want, subscribe if you want, and as usual, thanks for watching.